Good morning, guys. Morning. This week, we're going to do something a little bit different. Yeah, we're going to be talking about van life realities today, all the way from finances, park ups, healthcare, loads and loads of good stuff. We're really excited to make this video. <laughs> yeah, so let's get stuck in. Yeah. So, today, guys, we're going to be. I'm almost finished. Boston 10 van life myths. Whoop, whoop. So we have lived full time in this van for over three years. We've met loads of people on the road. So we feel like we've heard quite a lot of the misconceptions and myths around van life. And today we're gonna bust them. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. What do you have for me? <laughs> okay, first one I've noted down guys is uh, van lifers don't shower for weeks. Not a myth. Okay, next one, next one, next one. Um, van lifers only wash their sheets four times a year. Also not a myth. Um, all van lifers pee in oh. bottles. What? Also not a myth. We're meant to be busting myths about van life, not our life. Okay, okay. Uh, enough about us guys. Let's actually get into these myths. So, first myth to bust. Van life is expensive to get into. Yes. You see all over the internet that there's people with like 100,000 pound vans and kitted out to the absolute max, filled with all the highest grade technology and stuff. So it can be really, really expensive to buy a van and build a van, but also you can get vans for so cheap. You can build them out with secondhand materials, with mm -hmm. refurbed stuff. You could buy a like 20 year old van instead of a two year old van. And honestly, the price range can vary significantly. Yeah, for example, we bought Martha for three and a half thousand pounds three years ago, and we spent about 5,000 pounds on the, the build itself. Now I know that the price of vans and the price of materials has went up, but there are options. Also, we have friends that have did their build out of pallet wood stuff mm -hmm. like that they don't have electronics or solar or anything and they did their build for like less than a thousand pounds yeah so it's definitely possible to access it with less money and the thing with a van build is it's a never-ending project even when we moved into this van it was six months before we'd finally finished everything so that's another way that you can make it cheaper is to just take longer to do your build upgrade as the finances come in and van life is accessible for a wide range not just 100,000 Point sprinter builds. Have we busted a myth? Myth busted! <laughs> Boom! Oh, high five! <laughs> myth number two you have to be skilled to build a van. Wrong. Busted. Next myth! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just focused on the fact that skill to build rhymes. If I can help build a van, anyone can build a van. Obviously, if you had carpentry skills and you had woodwork skills, you could make it really beautiful and finessed. If you had electronic or plumbing experience, it would be a much less stressful experience doing that. But the truth is, you can learn pretty much anything about a van build on YouTube. Also, if you're not sure about something or if you're confused about something, ask anyone online to mm -hmm. help. People love talking about their fans and their yeah. builds and their electric setups. People are there to help. Yeah, for sure. Even us as well. If there's anything you like in here or not, <laughs> just hit us up in the comments below and we'll be happy to chat about it. I mean, don't come to us for electric or plumbing advice, please. <laughs> hey, it works. These lights are working. Right Guys, now. everything works. It's been three years. This van is still 100% together, so mm -hmm. it must be okay. YouTube is a good teacher. So, myth busted. Myth number three, van life is cheap. Yes, throughout this video, we're always gonna be comparing stuff to our life pre-van life. So we're talking about our own situation and there is no denying that van life is cheaper than whenever we lived in London. We don't have to pay rent. Our amenities like gas and electric are pretty much, well, we do pay gas, but it's much, much less than it was in London. Mm -hmm. We were dropping like, nearly two grand a month on London, literally just on bills. So when you compare it to that, van life is significantly cheaper, but it is a myth that I think we can bust. What we've realized is that there can be a lot of unexpected costs with van life. For example, the one that everybody probably has had mm -hmm. are breakdowns. Mm -hmm. Your van can just, like, out of nowhere, cost you a grand to fix. That has happened to us quite a few times now. But another thing that's happened to us is the fact that we've had somebody crash into our van while it was parked stationary on a straight road. Some lady crashed into our van and caused three and a half thousand pound worth of damage. So crashes as well as general breakdowns are something that you're going to have to factor in. We were really fortunate that that was paid for by her insurance. Mm -hmm. But we have heard horror stories of people where insurance companies wouldn't pay out and stuff. So there are big expenses that can come your way but it's not only random costs that come at you from nowhere there's also the fact that diesel has gotten very expensive but that depends on how you travel if you're traveling um, pretty fast and quick then you're gonna go through so much diesel but if mm -hmm. you like to travel slower and um, taking the sights more your diesel consumption will be a lot less so you won't be spending as much money 
Yeah, you can make traveling as expensive or as cheap as you want. For example, our journey back from Greece, because we've only a couple of weeks left here, that whole journey home is gonna cost us over a grand. But there was like a month before where we were just like pottering about and we only spent like 200 pound on travel costs. So it depends whether you need ferries, etc., And it also depends what country you're traveling through. For example, diesel is very expensive in like Scandinavia and stuff. So you would have to factor that cost into travel those countries, as well as if you broke down in Scandinavia it probably costs like five times as much for repairs as it would in like Romania or somewhere so whenever you're traveling the speed you go and the countries you go to will significantly impact how expensive it is so van life can be cheap but it can also be extortionate mm -hmm. there are some good tips <laughs> well done did you come up with them all yourself <laughs> I'm so impressed with you she blows my mind constantly oh, sheesh. <laughs> okay okay that myth has been busted I think. semi bust <laughs> Guys, if you haven't noticed that we've also been changing our t-shirts, you know. Um, why have we been changing t-shirts? Uh, just to mix up the shots between each myth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But a cool thing is that I think I'm a magician. Mm -hmm. Check this out. How neat is that? <laughs> On the next myth. Myth number four that we are going to bust for you is that it is not possible to get insured living full time in your van. If you've ever tried to get van insurance, you'll know that they ask you things like, do you have a garage? Do you have a driveway? Is it street parking? Is it rural? Is it in the city? What do you do for a living? Are you going to use the van for tools or whatnot? Mm -hmm. And it feels like you have to tick all these boxes just for them to approve your insurance. But thankfully guys, we are currently with Sterling Insurance and they know that we are full timers in our van. They know we travel Europe and everything. We've got 365 cover. They know we make YouTube videos. They know we're self-employed. They do all sorts of weird and wacky conversions. It's not like you have to be like registered on your logbook to be a camper van they do self builds basically anything you want to get covered being super transparent with us and we really really do recommend them so i'll pop the link down below if you want to check them out and that just takes a huge weight off our chest knowing that our van is just fully covered mm -hmm. so we can personally 100 percent bust that myth boom don't ask me why i'm doing this <laughs> you're busting these myths <laughs> so now that you know you can travel full time let's move on to myth number five boom <laughs> You have to travel full time if you live in a van. This is a big misconception we hear from everyone. If you live in a van, you must be full time traveling. But we can bust it personally because the entire first year we lived in this van, we lived in London, stealth camped on the streets, both had full time jobs in the city. So you absolutely do not have to full time travel to still enjoy living in a van. Initially, when we first moved into the van, we weren't thinking about traveling at all. Mm -hmm. It was purely financial. We were just trying to save money and work at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people that also live in a van for financial reasons, uh, but there's also a lot of people that love the simple lifestyle mm -hmm. as well and simple living. Yeah, you don't have to be traveling around. We know lots of people who live stationary in the UK or people who live in different countries and they just live that slow paced life without actually traveling around. So there's loads of different reasons to get in van life. It's not just for traveling. So we can personally 100% attest to the fact that that myth is bustable. Busted. Combusted. <laughs> okay, so myth Ooh. number six that I want to bust is about being able to access a GP if you have no address. A big myth I've realized is that you need to have a specific postcode and you need to live in the area of a GP to be able to access one. And I'm here to tell you, you absolutely do not need to have a fixed abode to be able to access healthcare. Really? Really? Obviously I'm speaking from a UK point of view. It was an effort, I did have to argue for many days, but you have full rights to access healthcare. You can get the GP to put down their own address as your address of fixed abode. I think this is a really important one because I feel like this could stand in the way for a lot of people and put them off traveling because they don't have access to their medication or their prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have epilepsy, which means I have a prescription every month and I need to have access to this medication. So moving into the van and having no fixed abode really worried me that I wouldn't get access to healthcare, but I have had access to a GP you can get access to. Whenever I have went abroad, I have been worried I won't be able to get my epilepsy medication, but I literally just walk into any pharmacy in the whole of Europe, in Turkey, you walk in, you show them a past prescription saying what medication you're on, and you can buy it over the counter. Mm -hmm. No problem. 
immediate access. So if you're worried about moving into a van because of healthcare, do not be worried. You will be able to get healthcare. I've had it in all these different countries, Canada, Australia, everything. So listen to me, you do not have to worry about it. You will get access to it. And if you've any questions down in the comments or direct message me on Instagram, I'm happy to advise how you fight for your rights to medical healthcare because you get them. You're so, you, who is this? <laughs> It I'm just it, it really upset me early on when I felt like it was really difficult for me to get access to it. So I'm very passionate about it. I mm. will help you get it if you need it. Myth busted. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Let's get on to the next myth. Yes. Um. No. 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 <laughs> I've forgotten that I had some stuff. No. And I also don't really know what was going through my mind no. when we purchased half this stuff. No. I just thought it was like rocky. You know, I've got a hood in the back. I was gonna, <laughs> like, I, I kind of, I don't understand. I don't understand what this is. You're gonna have to be wearing that for this entire, this entire myth. Well, that's, this, <laughs> this one's gonna be busted pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> myth number seven is that van life is full of awesome, perfect park ups. That I can tell you is a 100% lie. Yeah. Obviously, we can only really talk about our own experience, but for us, over 50% of the time in the van has been spent in streets, car parks, rest stops, mm -hmm. this like that. Yeah, and you might have like boy racers come by, locals, police checks. It is not always these beautiful, chilled out, relaxing park ups. That is 100% a myth. And when you do get to those nice park ups, it can be like a first come, first serve basis. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to find somewhere in season, you might go down this lane for miles and you're on this like bumpy road down to this super serene park up and you get there only mm -hmm. to uh, like half a dozen vans all mm -hmm. parked up. So not only do you get this uh, misrepresentation that the park ups are all beautiful and it's all wonderful, you also get the misrepresentation of weather always being beautiful, idyllic blue skies. The truth is that the weather sucks a lot of the time, especially if you go out of season to get quieter park ups, it means the trade off is probably worse weather. You say that, when it's cold, it's really cold in the mm -hmm. van, and when it's hot, it's really hot in the van. That's true. You know, there's like a very minute sweet spot that yeah. you have to like slither in there. Spring and autumn. Let us know, because we have this to be all the time. Would you rather be too hot in the van or too cold in the van? Which one is more unbearable for you? Tell us right now in the comments, and we can see who votes. I would rather be too hot. You would um, rather yeah. be too cold. Yeah, because you can always put a jumper on. I can't take my skin off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, that is a misconception. The weather is not always great. The park ups are not always great. Sometimes it sucks, but sometimes it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah? As with life, mm -hmm. there's ups and downs. <laughs> like this transition, <laughs> up and down. Again, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, myth number eight. Van life is lonely. I would love to be able to 100% bust this myth, but the truth is, even with us as a couple, van life actually can be really quite isolating. Yeah, one of the problems with van life is that you can go for weeks without talking to another human being. Mm -hmm. You can hide out in the van quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to be introverted yeah. in the van. Yeah, it really is. And also if you're traveling quite fast, you don't really get time to set routes down and actually meet new people. Mm -hmm. In saying that, when you do meet people, you always have an instant connection. You've got so much in common. Mm -hmm. We've met some of our friends for life on the road. Yeah, I would say that even though van life can be lonely, van life makes for some of the most intense connections you will make when you meet people. Some of our best friends we've met through like Instagram and YouTube and stuff and other people you meet on the road. And even though it can be lonely, if you put the effort in, it can also like bring you the best friends you'll ever meet. So van life can be lonely, but also it can make you incredible friends if you're willing to get out of your shell a little bit, put in a bit of work. So myth is semi-busted. Next myth, but guys, we are running out of space. So we've got so many clothes <laughs> on the floor, but we've got to keep going. Check this out. <laughs> Number nine. Van lifers are dirt bags. Speak for yourself. Oh, well, guys, we just put on 10 new outfits in one day, so I don't know what people are talking about. These dirty 10 outfits? <laughs> yes, there's no denying that your hygiene changes from a flat to a van, your standards shift. Yeah, because you don't have access to the amenities that you did once have. Yeah, however, we are not all dirt bags all of the time. 
And in regards to the pee bottle comment at the start of this video, it is actually a thing. You can buy pee bottles on Amazon and even people with toilets use pee bottles just because it's so much easier to empty a pee bottle rather than a full chemical toilet or yeah. a compost toilet. Yeah, it's just a thing guys. I promise it's not as gross as it sounds. <laughs> if you're worried about not having access to showers and stuff, obviously we don't have one here. We just use a solar shower or else we go in the ocean or in the river, use biodegradable wipes or whatever you need to wash yourself. But if that's something that really concerns you and you think I couldn't live without that, we have friends who have a hot shower every single day in their van. Mm -hmm. Just prioritize it in your build guys. Van life, you can be as clean or as dirty as you want. Woohoo! Yeah. Is that is that that myth busted? Is that an excuse? Shut up! Okay, shut up! Myth busted. Not true, not true, yeah. mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, guys. Get a partner with a weak sense of smell. <laughs> Myth busted. That would be unbusted. That would be like deep busted. Unbusted. <laughs> guys, I swear, you can be clean living in a van, I promise. Okay, so myth busted. So we're on our last and final myth, mm -hmm. uh, but we've kind of run out of clothes, so <laughs> we're going to need to improvise. Okay. I don't have to do. <laughs> so, what in, what's in your pocket? I don't know, don't pull it out in case. Oh, it's a bobble. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't know what that Risky. was. <laughs> but our final myth, guys, okay, from the two van lifers on YouTube right now, is that not all van lifers are on YouTube. <laughs> kind of ironic, I know. <laughs> So I think there's a big misconception that everyone doing van life is trying to be on Instagram or trying to be on YouTube and the truth is when you're out in the road you meet people who don't even have phones, people who don't give two craps about social media. You think you're going to meet all these like 20 and 30 year old digital nomads. That could not be further from the truth. Almost everyone we meet is like double our age. You've got people raising small families, you've got people who have no interest in being connected whatsoever and I think what you see on Instagram and YouTube is a small slither of a very diverse spectrum of van life. Usually because the digital nomads are like parked up in a car park somewhere editing their photos and videos so you never see them. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Oh dear. But honestly, guys, we try to share our life quite authentically and show you all the highs and lows that we are going through. But remember that social media is just a slither of reality. And there are so many incredibly diverse people out there doing this. Get out of your comfort zone. Go talk to people. Learn what van life is all about. You can't learn it all from us on this video. But we have tried to show you some of it. We've tried to bust some myths. Thank you guys for sticking around for all 10 of those. If we have missed any myths, Stick them in the comments below, mm -hmm. chat to us, we'd love that. And we hope to see you guys next week when we're going to be exploring more of the very beautiful Greece. So thanks again for watching. We love you guys so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now we need to tidy away all these clothes. Later. I was just gonna say that. <laughs>